Hey everybody, welcome back to Rick's Trips. Let's go to Anchorage, Alaska. It's just a three and a half hour flight from Seattle and you get to see some beautiful sites like the volcano Mount Edgecombe, which is 15 miles to the west of Sitka. Mount Edgecombe last erupted 4,000 years ago. However, on April Fool's Day 1974, it looked like it was erupting again and scared a whole bunch of people in the town. They called the event Porky's Rising. It was a April Fool's joke set up by one of the locals who was a World War II D-Day veteran and set a bunch of tires on fire. I guess they did that back then. I love how I find some of that bonus information when I'm researching these videos. Now the plane's just over Cook Inlet and just about to touch down. Ted Stevens Airport, Anchorage, Alaska. What a beautiful flight that was. Every time I take that flight, I'm going to make sure I get a window seat. It's just amazing out there. You know I had to get a control tower in there as a retired air traffic controller. But I love this airport. I love to see the moose. I love to see all the airplanes inside the airport. The luggage arrived quickly. I went up to the upper level and hailed my Uber ride, which was only 15 minutes to downtown in my aviator hotel. The Uber only cost me $20, and then I added a $5 tip. Be sure to tip your Uber drivers out there. They don't include those tips anymore. And do the same for Lyft, too. I did that for a while, Uber and Lyft. Believe me, the company makes a lot more than those drivers do. And the one I had on this trip gave me a lot of information for spending my day and a half in Anchorage. You can't tell from the video here, but it was 10.30 at night, and to me, four hours difference from Florida, that was 2.30 in the morning. Couldn't sleep because the sun was so bright, so I just decided to take a walk around town, see it was in a local area, and I figured I'd get a Good night's sleep. I find the best way to see as much of the city as I could before I wake up on the following day and get on the amazing Alaskan Railroad from Anchorage to Seward, Alaska to jump on my cruise ship, the Radiance of the Sea, all the way back to Vancouver. I definitely got a lot of travel related content on this trip. Cruise content, train content, and you saw the amazing plane ride that I took. I even have a couple of hotel videos that you should check out. And don't forget the cruise cabin review. And also, in some of these videos, you're going to see moose, bear, and eagles. And maybe even a whale spot or two. If you like this video, and like any of my videos, please press the like button. It really helps other people find the videos, and helps my channel get bigger. Oh, and please don't forget to subscribe. That really helps the channel get bigger. I'd appreciate it. This is all in the downtown area of Anchorage, and I really enjoyed it here. It's very close to the train station, and there's a lot of great restaurants. Like after my beautiful night's sleep, I went to the White Spot Cafe, had an amazing breakfast. This place reminded me of no 50s type diner, but the food was fantastic. And look at the size of that sausage. Wow, it was good. I decided to walk off breakfast by just walking a few blocks to see where I was going to pick up the train the next morning. The Alaskan Railroad, down to Seward. I heard it's fantastic. And look how close it is to the Hilton. There's a lot of hotels around here. Prices are a lot higher than they are in Midtown or closer to the airport. But it is the summertime, and that's when everybody's coming to Anchorage. So be sure to research and book your hotel as early as you can. Not like I did. Not like I always do. I didn't even know I was going on this trip until about a week before I took it. That's how I roll. I was hoping to get to know the local transportation, but the day I was there happened to be Juneteenth, so local transportation was closed. All the shops and restaurants seemed to be open, though. Except for this Irish pub I was excited to find, only to find out it's for sale. Oh well. Hey, there's a whaling wall. I love seeing those. I got one like that in Destin and all over the world, actually. Well, I found a visitor center. Walked in there, they had a lot of good information for people. I didn't know there were sister cities for Anchorage. Although there aren't any in the U.S. Guess it's not cold enough. I saw that trolley and had to get on it. I just happened to see a lot of people standing in line in front of the visitor center. And I guess they were from a cruise ship that had just got into port in Anchorage. So I just purchased my ticket right there on the street. So if you want to book this tour, you go to AnchorageTrolley.com. And they have four different adventures. A one-hour city tour, a two-hour deluxe city tour... This is the one that I'm on here. Salmon Express, and one that I'd like to go back for one day, a Winter City Tour. 
is uh, the starting line of the Iditarod Sled Dog Race. Um, the, this race celebrates the 1925 serum run to Nome, Alaska, when the, uh, the village of Nome was struck with diphtheria, and the only way to get the serum there was to push it there through relay teams of dogs. Now, the dog that pulled in the dome carried the serum. The lead dog was named Malto, and Malt Busy made his, his famous uh, by a cartoon about him. But the real hero was a different dog, and his name was Togo. I'm going to tell you about Togo in just a minute. Just want to point out that the statue of the dog is on the next street corner, right underneath that red street light. And you can see the statue right there. So I was so fascinated by the story of Balto and Togo and how the Iditarod was started by a, sending a cure for the 1925 epidemic of diphtheria. And it was actually Universal Studios that made the movie back in 1995. And that was well after I was watching these types of movies, but I tell you, I'm looking forward to it. About two and a half days, Zeppelin knows that there are 59 children dying in Nome, Alaska, waiting for that serum. So he takes the chance and uh, he suggests the ice. We became a state January 3rd, 1959. This monument is affectionately referred to here in Anchorage as Ike on a Half Shell. Now when you're trying to honor a president, try not to make his head look like a pearl in a clamshell on the monument. Uh, uh, they wait up there at the big shop right there. And uh, he starts, kind of still, uh, we're going to be going out, it's 4 o'clock. It should be coming in at about 7. I think all the tours are narrated. This one was, and the lady sure did an excellent job. She even points out a moose to us, a house that is built underground, but the lady has to mow her roof. The fact that there are more airplanes in Alaska than there are pilot's license. I thought that was interesting. But then again, it is the wild, wild west of aviation. The first stop on the trolley tour was Ship Creek. It's down by the railroad station. And it was the original point where uh, Tent City was started back in the early 1900s when they were building a railroad, which was the beginning of Anchorage. They just happened to be having a salmon derby this day and everybody was trying to catch the biggest salmon. I didn't see any though. According to Alaska.org, they have fishing derbies regularly every summer. And you get king salmon at the beginning of the summer and silver salmon at the end of the summer. And if you catch one that's tagged, it could be worth a hundred to ten thousand dollars. watched people fish for about 15 minutes then got back on the trolley and headed to Resolution Park where the statue of Captain James Cook was. He's the one that discovered the Cook Inlet and the Turnigan Arm and he was looking for the Northwest Passage. So he arrives here in July of 1778, a full two years after leaving England and he thinks this is the Northwest Passage because the mouth of the Cook Inlet was wide enough but it dead ends about six miles from here. And that night he writes in his captain's log, I fear once again, I must turn in my ship, returning to the open ocean in search of the elusive passage. This is a beautiful place to come see the water. And you can also see the mountains, the largest mountain in North America. Although you can't see Mount Denali from this clip, I do have some other clips coming up later on in this trolley tour where you will be able to see it. There's 14 sets that lead down to her front door. The two skylights are on floor three and they'll a 60 degree temperature in that house for their body heat. And $125 a month to heat her 2,800 square foot home in Anchorage, Alaska. So a very efficient way to build up from the Arctic. She does, however, have to mow her room. The earthquake starting in downtown Anchorage rippled along the shoreline of Anchorage and 150 to s or more homes uh, slipped into the inlet. Altogether, there were over 400 homes destroyed in Anchorage when the platelet began to separate and fall. Um, of the nine people who died in Anchorage, seven died in their homes here at Earthquake Park. This is the North American uh, tectonic plate. This is the Pacific, and this is the North American tectonic fault line. It begins here in Alaska and goes all the way to, uh, to Antarctica. Uh, well, at Earthquake Park, there was an opportunity to take a hike if this bird would get out of the way. It was a pretty cool walk. Just went a short distance because of the mosquitoes. They were everywhere. 
It's the only time I had a mosquito issue the whole time I was in Alaska. And there we are standing on the fault line. A short drive up from Earthquake Park was Point Waranzoff. A great view of when the Nick Arm intersects with Cook Inlet and you have beautiful views of the mountains and there's Mount Denali. You can barely make it out on the right. Apparently, this is also a great place to see moose. They love to hang out by the noisy airplanes and I guess all the wind keeps the mosquitoes down. I didn't see any yet though. Can't really hear the tour guide on this, so basically FedEx and UPS and DHL and all the major long distance parcel services base out of Anchorage, Alaska because it's within 10 hours flying time for every major city in the Northern Hemisphere. Around the lake uh, as well. Uh, when you hit permafrost, you have to dig off all that ice and backfill with gravel. That makes roads in Alaska about 10 times more expensive to build than anywhere else. I guess if you want to learn to fly, Alaska is the place to do it. Wow. And they accomplished this feat in under 18 months. They had to build 400 miles of tender with gravel. They had to build 143 bridges across rivers. And they had to blast away across the Rocky Mountains four times. When they arrived at the middle, they were brought into Anchorage and then they uh, and brought into Anchorage where they um, where they were honored by the city of Anchorage. And as a direct result of the positive influence these soldiers had, the Americans here in Anchorage in 1949 were the was the first place in the United States to pass anti-discrimination laws. Those soldiers coming from from uh, the Yukon territory into into Alaska uh, was the first. Uh, it was the 97th, 104th, and 105th Division of Army Corps of Engineers, the first time the court had been made up entirely by soldiers of African-American descent. So these young engineers from Tuskegee University building road across Alaska so that in the event of an attack, the Americans could be taken out safely. I had one of the men from the 97th Battalion on my trolley, 17 years ago. He was 96 years old. I love that trolley tour. Well worth the $50 per adult and $25 per child. According to the tour director, the high tide should be in about now, so I wanted to go down to Ship Creek and check out the Salmon Derby. I saw a lot of history on the railroad on the way. Between the building of the railroad and the Alcan Alaskan Canadian Highway, people that built Anchorage are a great reminder of the type of people that built this country. Hey everybody, I'm here in Anchorage, Alaska in front of the Ulu factory. I'm gonna go check out the salmon tournament they got going on at Ship Creek. Yeah, Ship Creek. Let's go see. It's uh, real sunny out right now. Even though it's 7.30 at night, it doesn't get dark here until 11.40, something like that. And tomorrow, I think it's midnight or the day after. Land in the midnight sun. All right, check it out. I'm gonna keep going uh, on a train tomorrow and head to Seaward, Alaska. Spend the night there and then get on a ship. Take the inside passage to Vancouver. 
Let's go. Even down by the river, you can hear the music from the music festival that's going on. And apparently, they have that festival every weekend in the summer. They seem to have a lot of things going on in Anchorage all the time. And they're obviously real proud of their history, as they should be, because everywhere you seem to walk, there's something that tells you the story about Anchorage. Hope this guy catches some fish. Maybe one of those with the tags on it that's worth some money. I'd love to try that sometime. Do you need a license? And you can get those just about anywhere. Very cool. Well, I still didn't see anybody catch any salmon, but what a way to spend an early evening in Anchorage. Well, here you go. More signs. I loved it. Love learning about everything. What a great city. Well, time to head back up the hill, try to grab me some dinner, and see what's going on at that music fest. Well, there was a lot of people there. It looked like they were having a great time. I figured I'd walk back and get some food. Look at that sled. I had passed this uh, Tequila 61 restaurant several times, so I figured, man, I'd like to have a margarita about now. The food was awesome. <laughs> Okay, after a good dinner and a good night's sleep, time to head to the train. I had an excellent stay in Anchorage. Even though it was quick, I can't wait to go back. Here I am at the train station getting ready to get on to the coastal classic of the Alaska Railroad. One of the most scenic train rides in the world, I think. There's definitely no better way to get from Anchorage down to Seward and get on the cruise ship. Check out those videos. Okay, getting ready to get to my Gold Star train on the Alaska Railroad. Heading to Seward, Alaska. The adventures continue. I'll end this video with a sneak peek of my journey on the Alaska Railroad Coastal Classic from Anchorage down to Seward. Seen a lot of glaciers. I saw some bear. I saw some moose, a bunch of eagles, and some gorgeous scenery. We'll see you next time. <laughs>